This is a simple tutorial to make a bicycle tire with tread. This tire is a 622 millimeter tire that is 25 millimeters wide. The 622 millimeters refers to the inner diameter of the tire, not the outer diameter. And the 25 millimeters sort of kind of refers to the width of the tire, but not exactly. I won't go into the detailed reasons for that. It's one of those great mysteries of bicycle tires. The tread on the tire is going to be alternating from the right side to the left side, as you see here. The tire itself is nothing more than a simple cross section revolved around an axis. Here's a close up of the cross section, and you see that we are only going to be making one half of the tire at a time. Added to the sidewall of the tire is going to be a ridge. And when we make the tread on the tire, we are just going to add one example of the tread and then pattern it. Then we are going to mirror the entire body of the tire with the tread. And we're going to take the half that we mirrored, which has been left unmerged, shift it using the move body command in order to get this alternating pattern. And finally, all we have to do is combine the two halves together to make it a single part. The starter file for this tutorial consists of a master file which has been inserted as step A. This is the same master file you will be using for your bicycle wheel project. There are only two sketches in this master file that you need to concern yourself with, so I will be hiding the ones that we don't need to worry about. I've hidden all of the sketches except for the rim and tire diameter sketch and the typical rim cross-section sketch. Added to the starter file is an axis that everything will be rotated around and a tread plane locator sketch. The tread plane locator sketch has a wedge in it that is six degrees wide three degrees above the horizontal axis and three degrees below. The six degrees number comes from my assumption that I will pattern the tread 60 times around the tire. So 360 divided by 60 is equal to six. If you have a very slow computer that can't pattern the tread very well, you might want to have fewer tread blocks and divide by a smaller number, which will actually make this wedge larger. I arrived at most of these numbers experimentally. There's nothing actually magical about them. If we zoom in a little closer, we can see that this is going to be the maximum height for our tread so that when it's patterned around the tire, this tread, when patterned to the next position, won't overlap the next position. I'm also using a sketch to create a location for a sketch plane that will be sitting out here. This plane is somewhat arbitrarily located, but it will be used for drawing the actual tread so that we can project a cut onto the surface of the tire here. This 20 millimeters could be just about any number. Closing the sketch, we see that the last thing inserted into the starter file is this tread sketch plane, which is passing through this line in the tread plane locator sketch. So let's begin with step number one, which will be to create the actual tire. Zooming in so I can see my rim sketch, I'm going to make a sketch on the top plane. First thing I'm going to do is copy this circle which represents the tire surface. I'm going to offset this one millimeter inward. And now what I have to do is create some details that will allow the tire to lock or clinch onto this bead, which is part of the rim. And those details need to seat against this inner wall of the rim and against this surface of the rim. I will do that by converting some of the entities from this sketch. Select this one, this one, and this one. Then I'm going to draw a new line It's about 2.5 millimeters from the inner wall of the rim. And I'm going to draw a line here. I'm 
going to make this line tangent to my arc. Make it about 45 degrees. Then I'm going to trim away the portions of the lines that I don't need. Before I do that, I'm going to add a line out here that is coincident with my front plane. This is going to be where the one half of the tire ends. So using trim entities, I'll get rid of this excess material. Leaving me with my final tire profile. So this is the tire surface and this is the portion that locks into the rim. It seats up against this surface and the inside wall of the rim. I think I'll finish this off with a little radius here. So perhaps about a one millimeter fillet in this corner. Looks about right. Now I'm just going to revolve this profile about my main axis. There we've got one half of our tire. Second step is going to be to add that little ridge that runs around the sidewall. Again, going into my top plane, new sketch. I'm going to copy this circle again. I'm going to offset this about a quarter millimeter going outward. And I'm going to draw two vertical lines. Make those three quarters of a millimeter wide. Trim away all of the excess, leaving sort of a box. And I will dimension that box to the center of my tire. So I've got a center mark here from my layout sketch. I'll dimension to this side of my ridge. I will make that 3.5 millimeters. Once again, I will revolve that around my main axis. So zooming in to see the final result, you see we have a tire with a little ridge, and this is the detail that's going to lock into the rim. This surface here is the 622 millimeter diameter of the tire. Our next step is going to be to draw the profile that represents the tread. To do this, I'm going to make sure that my tread plane locator sketch is visible. And on my tread plane sketch, I'm going to draw a new sketch. Vertical distance of this line represents the maximum height that my tread can be. To remind me of that, I'm just going to add a center line. It has a coincident relation to the end of the line here and a coincident relation here. And we'll just make both of these horizontal. As long as I draw my tread in this area and also make sure that it doesn't go out farther than the tire, I should be safe when I pattern it. If you look at a lot of tires, they often have some interesting treads with some interesting spline shapes. So I'm just going to draw some sort of a spline here. And normally the tread doesn't actually have perfectly sharp corners like this. We want to add some fillets to the corners. A lot of times if we have a spline in a sketch and we try to add a fillet to it, the spline starts doing weird things to us. So I'm just going to leave the sketch alone with the sharp corners and finish the sketch. Now I'm going to make a new sketch on that same tread plane. And I'm going to copy this entire sketch into it. I'll do that by just clicking on the sketch and saying convert entities. And now I have the ability 
to easily add some fillets without causing any errors or the splines to do something unexpected. Usually anywhere from a quarter to one millimeter radius in the corners of these treads is appropriate for this scale. Now that I've got my shape with the little radii added into the corners, now I'm ready to do my actual cut into the surface. I'm going to use the offset from surface option into the surface here. I'm only going to go in about a quarter of a millimeter, not very far. I'm going to make sure it goes into the tire and isn't offset away from it. Right now we can just see that it hasn't quite made it to the tire surface, so I will reverse the offset. Now that is cutting into the surface of the tire. Now I'm just going to delete this feature. And roll this file forward to the actual tread that I put into my example file. And again, I drew this sketch with sharp corners. And then when I made the cut, I put rounded corners into the sketch that's actually doing the cutting. Now it's just a matter of patterning the tread a total of 60 times around the tire. I actually had to edit out some of the extra time it took to pattern this, and if you have a slower computer, it might take quite a while. Now you might be wondering why I didn't just cut this shape into the tire with the sharp corners and then just add the fillet separately. The reason is, is that when we pattern the tread, then SolidWorks is going to have to pattern all those fillets as separate features in the pattern. This takes a huge amount of calculation and can really slow the pattern down. So if we can have the fillets in the actual cut, then there's less calculation to be done when the pattern is made. The next step is to just mirror over the body to the other side. Make sure when you do this that you use the bodies box, not the features box, and you also uncheck merge solids. Now we're going to use a command that I don't believe we've used before, and that's going to be to rotate this mirrored half just a little bit. I'm going to do that using the insert feature move copy command. The body we're going to move is going to be the one we just mirrored. We want to make sure that if we see something that looks like this with coincident parallel perpendicular, we go down to the bottom and change this menu to translate rotate. That gives us an option for translate and rotate. We want to rotate this about an axis. The axis will be the main axis in our part here, step B. And we're going to rotate this one half tread space. Since the tread takes up a six degree angle, we're only going to rotate this three degrees so that this chunk here sort of fits into here. You might want to experiment with the shape of your tread so that when you do this shift, you'll get sort of an interesting pattern that alternates back and forth. The last step now is simply to glue these two together using our combine command. So insert feature combine. We'll use the default of add. Select these two bodies. And now it's glued together as a single body. Now most tires are not light blue like this, although they do come in a variety of colors. Let's go and make this a more traditional color. We'll right click on the part name at the top of the feature tree. Go to our little beach ball. Select the entire part. And then we'll make this like a dark gray. We'll make it dark gray instead of black so that we can still see some of the lines. And then a lot of tires have a contrasting color on this surface here. The tread will often be black and then the sidewall will be some other color. This is one of the reasons why I had you put in this little ridge. Now to do this, we're going to have to just change the color of the surface. 
not the actual feature itself. So I'm going to hold my control key down and select this face, and this face, then I'm going to click on appearances and we're going to just change the color of the face, not the actual body or the feature. Maybe we can make this uh, green if we want. We won't change the color here because that won't be seen once it's attached to the wheel. And I'll do the same over here. I'll hold my control key, click on this face and this face, select appearances, click on face, and again make this green. I'm not sure which shade I chose the first time around. Might have two different greens here. Now I have a tire with a nice black or dark gray tread and a brightly colored sidewall. And that completes our bicycle tire tutorial.